Hi, so today we're doing some geography and we're going to be looking at why do people live near volcanoes? We're going to be looking at some of the positives and negatives of living near volcanoes and why people might choose to live there. So first of all, we're going to create a little bit of a word bank and I want you to put these words back together. So I've jumbled them all up, I've split them into two and you need to find the beginnings and endings of some words and um, they're all related to volcano vo vocabulary. Okay, there's eight words to find if you can. And then a little challenge for you, if you do find all eight super quickly, I want you to think of the meanings for these words too. Some of them you may need to look up if you've not seen them before. And then you'll have a word bank all to do with volcanoes. So either on your worksheet or um, on a piece of paper, I want you to think about the risks that people might have of living next to a volcano. So there's some pictures here for you to have a look at with lots going on. Um, and I want you to think of what could be some of the risks that come with these in living near a volcano. What might happen if you live next to one of these? Okay, and then once you've done that, um, we're going to move on to our positives and negatives. So we're going to look at these different statements together. And as we're going through, you can colour code them or you can use this space on your worksheet um, into positive and negative reasons of why people might live near volcanoes. So fertile soil that can be used to grow crops such as grapes or oranges. Volcanic bombs can destroy anything that they land on. Air pollution from constant eruptions of the volcano, which give out sulfur. Some of the heated mud areas around the volcano can be used to cure aches and pains. Power that can be created from the heat underneath the earth. Gases given off by the volcano can often suffocate people. Tourists coming to see the volcano and having tours to the top. Heavy mud flows caused by eruptions move at 100 kilometers an hour. Area can be quickly cut off as lava, flow, uh, lava, co lava flows cover roads and railways. Pyroclastic flows, which is a mixture of hot gases and rocks, move so fast that nobody can get out of the way. Dust from eruptions can cover farmland and starve crops of light. Metals such as iron or copper can be dug out of the ground. Okay, so I want you to think about what are the positives and what are the negatives of those. Okay, then once you've had a go at working those out, we're going to use them again. And this time we're going to sort them into different categories. So we've got three categories here, our social, our environmental and our economic. Now, our social is all to do with people, population and society. Okay. And then we've got our environmentals. That's to do with the environment, the land, the animals, OK, even the air, things to do with that. And then we've got our economic, which is all to do with money or goods or things that could be sold. OK, a way of uh, generating income. So do any of these also fit in more than one category? OK, so have a look at these statements. Are they social, economic or environmental? Or are they more than one? Are they all three? OK, and once you've had a go at sorting those through, you think which is the most important reason why people might live next to volcanoes and why? It's really important that we explain why we think it's most important. So have a look at your positive um, statements and think about why is this the most important reason. Now, I've got some sentence starters here for you to use only if you want to. Um, the most important reason why people would live near a volcano is this is important because that's us explaining the why. Now, if you really want to, you can go on to also mentioning some of the negatives. So, however, some of the risks are, but these could be managed by, I want you to think, can you find a way to manage those negatives? 
And then I want you to think, is there um, any examples of places in the world today where these things have happened, where have people chosen to live near volcanoes? Can you give any examples? Lots in Europe, lots in America, um, lots in Asia as well. Have a think of any volcanoes where there are lots of populations there. And then if you still want to do a bit more on volcanoes, I have a little extension here for you. Um, so we've got six pictures here and we need to match those up with these six statements. So lava and the weathered material, which is rock naturally broken down, form nutrient rich soil that can be cultivated to produce healthy crops and high yield harvests. The soil naturally contains potassium, nitrogen and sulfur. Sulfur is the thing that smells like egg. If ever you've um, smelt the gas that smells like egg, that's to do with sulfur. The steam is used to drive turbines in geothermal power stations, producing energy for domestic and industrial use. In countries such as Iceland, this is the main source of power and it's cheap and kind to the environment as it uses natural sources of fuel so heat from the earth. So that's one of our renewable energy sources. Local people will collect the ash to turn into new products. The ash is very rich in nutrients and some people swear by these ingredients. When found, these can generate an income for people. Others may come to search for these. Shops in the local area will stock these and mining in volcanic areas also employs a large number of people. These are collected and sold in shops. They can help to generate an income as tourists will want an authentic product to take home with them. This creates many jobs for local people as they could work as tour guides in hotels and restaurants in the shops. Okay, so here we have space for you on your worksheet to have a go at this extension. And I hope you've enjoyed learning about volcanoes.